Um, the amount of time you get on your postgraduate work permit depends on your time of stay in Canada as a student. Okay, so let's see. Hello guys, what's up and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. So um, this video is actually going to be a short one because um, today I'll be letting you guys in on how to choose your university or how to choose a university for your master's program um, in Canada um, for, us, um, for international students, um, specifically for international students. Okay, yeah. So um, I posted a video, uh, I think that was five, four days ago. Usually I post videos like every week, but I decided to do this one before the week actually comes because I keep getting questions um, based on the video I recently posted. Okay, so this video is just to let you guys in on how to choose the, the schools. Okay, how to choose the schools for your master's program. All right, so in choosing the school, the first thing you need to know is that, um, or the first thing you need to do is to choose a designated learning institution. So in my previous video, I explained what a designated learning institution is, and I'm going to explain it again. Okay, so um, a designated learning institution is basically um, a school that has been approved by a territorial or a provincial um, government, okay, to accept international students. Do you understand? So if you choose a school that is not under the designated learning institution list, you cannot apply for it because that school do not what, accept international students. And if your school is under the designated um, learning institutions, you are eligible to apply for a postgraduate work permit, which like basically allows you to work after graduation. Okay. So in choosing your school, you need to make sure that this um, your school is under the list before you actually apply for it so that's the first one the next thing you need to um, consider is the length of program your length of program so your um, the amount of time you get on your postgraduate work permit depends on your time of stay in Canada as a student okay so let's say if you apply for um, a program that is like um, six months to uh, six months to one year you get um, a one year work permit after graduation but if you apply for a, um, a 16 months to a two-year program you get a three-year postgraduate work permit you understand so it all depends on um, how long maybe you have plans to work here in Canada so you just have to plan properly you just have to plan pro properly and mostly I advise people to apply for um, a two years program or a two years master's program or a two years postgraduate program so that when they are applying for a postgraduate work permit they actually do get a three year but if you have um, a six to one year program and you still want to apply for it you can still do that come to Canada and after that one year program or one year course you can apply for another year making it two so that would, that's going to be like two programs or that's going to be like an additional course that's going to be like an additional course yes an additional course to the one year you already did and that's actually going to extend your postgraduate work permit you understand so it's always advisable to just do the two years and that's what most people do that's what most people do so that's what i will advise okay so for the third point um i keep getting um this particular question english proficiency test that's the third point english proficiency test so um the good news is if you are coming to canada as an undergraduate student you don't need an English proficiency test yes you do not need it but if you are coming as a postgraduate um, student it can be kind of tricky because some schools accept it and some schools do not ask for it at all you understand you just need to do your research well but um, I will be leaving a list of schools or I'll be leaving a link which will direct you to um, the list of schools that do not accept English proficiency test for postgraduate studies or for your master's studies okay so you can just check the description below and um, you know the schools I'm talking about okay? my fourth point is that you apply for different schools just to be on the safer side do not keep all your eggs in one basket do not keep all your eggs in one basket apply for different schools okay but do not apply for more than three schools it depends if you have too much money or if you can afford to pay the application fee you can apply for those schools or you can apply for 
three or more schools okay but i will advise you apply for just one or two schools because you're paying for application fee and application fees are very very okay it depends on your pocket if you have the money you can afford it but if you don't have the money you don't necessarily have to like apply for too many schools okay yeah but like i said do not keep all your eggs in one basket apply for so many schools so that um if this one does not even choose you or something this one can choose you like it's all depends on how you want to do it okay so apply for two or maybe one or two yeah just one or two of them but if you can afford then you can apply for like three four five six that's your own problem okay that's your own problem now my fifth point is co-op programs co-op programs or you need to choose a school that has a co-op program or is offering um, a, a co-op program so if we say a co-op program it's basically what you might call an internship or something in your country okay so basically an internship okay so for co-op here it's very 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 good you have like an on hand um, practical learning experience and some companies here do actually accept people after their co-op programs and some companies do pay a lot of money they pay a lot of money so it's very very important that when you are choosing your school you choose a school that actually offers a co-op program it's very very important now one thing you also need to know is that not all co-op programs pay not all of them pay but if they do not even pay you you get to earn something at the end of the day it's just like a hand go hand come situation okay you get to learn a lot you get to learn more about your course it helps you direct the um, direct your path your career path it helps you in so 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 many ways so when you are choosing your school make sure they offer co-op programs it's very 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 important number six is tuition fee so this mostly depends on the ranks so in canada here they are like they have actually ranked the schools okay they have actually ranked the school so um the higher the rank the more you pay as tuition and the lower the rank the cheaper you have to like the cheaper the, the, um, the tuition actually is okay so but but let me see mostly it's not that um important okay the rankings are just to see oh, okay um let me use Ghana for instance. University of Ghana is better than Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Like that's the kind of mentality with the ranking and all those things over here. You understand? Just like you going for a job interview, you tell them, oh, you graduated from Harvard. Someone will come and be like, oh, I also graduated from, um, um, let, let me say, like a different school. They've, obviously, we all know Harvard is a very, very good school. You understand but the kind of knowledge you are going to acquire in harvard won't be that different from the kind of knowledge you are going to acquire from a different university that is equally good okay it's all the name it's all about the hype and all those things okay so that's all about the ranking so yeah that's all about the ranking so you don't necessarily have to be like okay this school is um highly ranked so it's uh it's the hype is there so i'm just going to apply for it but if you have a lower ranking school that is cheaper i will advise that you go in for it number seven is colleges versus universities or colleges and universities now when people are usually choosing schools they see schools that are tagged as colleges and they see schools that are tagged as um, universities now the main difference between these two is that colleges are way cheaper and universities are more expensive okay just let me use ghana as an example again now when like in ghana it's just recently that most um, technical universities also offer degrees and all that same here same here when you come to ghana and canada most um colleges do offer degrees as well but it mostly depends on the kind of program or the kind of course you uh, um, you are studying okay so that's the main difference but i would also once again advise that you go in for just going for what you think it's best for you just go for what you think it's best for you but the main thing between those two is that colleges are cheaper and universities are expensive okay so basically that's all i have for you guys today thank you for watching and please subscribe if you haven't so i'll be giving you guys more vibes on these kind of things okay so um happy new year yeah happy new year um
stick to this channel and please subscribe and yeah i will be leaving all the links to most of the things i said in the description so you can check it out right after this video take care of yourselves and stay healthy